Now I continue with day 10. Fueled, fed, and miles to go, we set our bikes and throttle up, leaving a tearful waitress in our wake. To catch our next state, we will have to do some city touring. Three Sioux cities exist. North Sioux City is in South Dakota. We pass the edge of it on the southbound Interstate 29. On the other side of the Big Sioux River, you are in Sioux City, Iowa. I put my fist in the air, signaling another state down. In just a few miles, the Big Sioux and the Missouri River merge. We take an exit and cross the now large Missouri River into South Sioux City, Nebraska. Just on the other side of the bridge, we do a U-turn and cross back into Iowa. We immediately start searching for a hotel with laundry facilities. We need to do laundry despite all the HD t-shirts we have acquired. We find one relatively close and check in. We ask the front desk lady about local restaurants that are good. The types of restaurants that one passing through the city might miss or don't get to try. She says there is this one place that diners, drive-ins, and dives did a show on. It's really good. I go there all the time. You will like it and it's close. We nod and smile at each other. Oh yeah, I love Mexican food is written all over our faces. We drop our stuff and meet back at the bikes. Turn by turn, I follow the directions given and everything is so nice. The city has a very nice, clean downtown area. We hit the first left given by the hotel host and I begin to feel the hunger for this TV famous place. The anticipation makes the group giddy. We rev our bikes and play acceleration games. Him first, then me. We do this back and forth for half a mile. We are stoked. The scene changes quickly. It is becoming clear that we are not in the clean downtown area anymore. The sense that we don't belong and are unwelcome washes over us. We quickly stow our playful antics until we're through the bad area. How do you know it's a bad area, you might ask? It is the slow progression of disrepair, less manicured lawns, bars on the windows, then to the plywood covered windows is how from municipal glitz to war zone in some three quarters of a mile. What do we do? Keep rolling, of course. I am armed and I know that we can drive out of this area shortly. That is, if the three quarter of a mile gauge holds. It does not. We are rolling steadily into the wrong side of town. I make the next left and see the restaurant sign. It points the way to a small door on the back of a building. The parking lot consists of a shell of a torn down building graveled over. The rough crowd in the parking lot is staring menacingly in our direction. Multiple ethnic groups are present in the parking lot, so there is no threat that we will be singled out for our skin tone alone. Despite the unwelcome appearance of the other patrons, I lead the way walking to the door. I am really hungry. I would sooner kill and eat one of these mean mugging parking lot dwellers than back out and find a friendlier looking joint. I'm not being boastful, just hungry. The other couple and I stride with confidence, but it is obvious that my wife is less than comfortable. We are all urged on by hunger. I don't normally strut, but the movie Stir Crazy taught me one thing. You have to act bad to not be messed with. That's right, that's right, we bad, repeats in my head as I walk with cautious confidence in my stride that my mind does not feel. My wife asks, are you sure about this? I say, if Guy Fieri can do it, so can I. The door opens up to a set of stairs that lead down to the actual restaurant. We take our place in line and my friend asks, you do have your gun on, right? Of course, I reply. I don't go anywhere without it. You have yours, right? He nods and pulls his shirt up to show me his pistol. He does not have a big gun. It is a 22 Magnum revolver with four shots. Not a hard hitting round, but just to know someone's got your back is reassuring. I put my hand in my jacket to reassure myself that my weapon is in the ready status I believe it to be in. The line moves steadily down and the main hall of the restaurant is now visible. It reveals itself to be an old laundromat. The walls are still lined with dryer doors. The floors are the same thin square tiles common in all laundromats. You can see the lines on the floor where the banks of washers used to stand. The counter is to the right and it is nothing special. It has a glass case where the meat is kept. You can see the big three, chicken, beef, and pork laying in rows behind the curved glass. Just then, my wife says, what does that smell? The open kitchen hides little, including the raw meat laying on top of the counter with flies circling it. There are a bunch of cooks preparing food in a manner that can only be described as filthy. I say, probably that meat on the counter. To that, my wife turns around and beats feet back up the stairs. 
Good thing too, I don't really see any free seats from which we could have ingested the sure to be food poisoning from. And decide, I don't want to be in a crossfire from a potential turf war either. I just sense that lead could break out at any moment if you know what I mean. That or a zombie apocalypse from the poorly handled meat. We retreat back up the stairs as well and leave. I don't know if I could have caught my wife in a foot race that night. She was out of there. Rough crowd or not, she is back at the bike well before the rest of us. So much for this dive, we are going to have to find someplace else. We noticed a barbecue place in the parking lot as we were leaving the hotel and go back to it in defeat. We wanted an adventure in eating. What we got was an adventure, but it was not in the eating variety. The barbecue place is famous Dave's and it was very good. I had a steak that was smoked, then grilled. Best steak ever. Despite the late hour, we still have laundry to do. I drag our dirty bundle across the hotel, and after an hour and a half, we have clean clothes. We are set to rock this ride several more days before we have to do it again. Good night, Iowa. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, consider giving it a like and sharing it with your friends. If you would like to be notified of future releases, consider subscribing to my channel. If you think it was cringe and absolutely ridiculous, go ahead and tell me in the comments below. Then share it with your friends. They may need a dose of cringe silliness today. Either way, thank you and God bless.